Hi, I'm Dr. Jackie, a child psychiatrist passionate about breaking down the stigma of pursuing a career in mental health. If that's something interesting to you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and I'll be posting a new video every single Friday. Welcome to the team. This video is part of a three-part series talking about what psychiatry is and how to become a psychiatrist. If you missed those videos, I'll put the link up in the eye and then in the description box below. In today's video, I'll be talking about all the awesome fellowships that you could choose to do after general psychiatry residency. The first one we're going to talk about is consultation liaison. The primary role of the CL team is to consult on the medically ill patients. As a med student, this might have been one of your psychiatry rotations, and definitely as a psychiatry resident. How this basically works is that the patient is admitted into a hospital, and the primary team consults you with a specific psychiatric question that the primary team needs help answering. This might include diagnosing and managing delirium in their patient, or even assisting them in managing a chronic mental illness that the patient had already been diagnosed with quite a while back. What we know is that people with mental illness suffer from more medical complications. Therefore, we want to make sure that we create a discharge plan that's realistic and prevents hospitalization. Depending on the location that you're working, you can imagine that the questions might be very different. So here's a few more things that you could possibly be consulted on. It makes a lot of sense that your mental health might suffer if you're medically ill. So these two definitely go hand in hand. Next up is addiction fellowship, where you can subspecialize in treating those with substance use disorders. During this fellowship, you would probably work on a dual diagnosis unit, which is where you treat patients with co-occurring diagnoses such as depression and alcohol use disorder or psychosis and marijuana use. For substances that result in withdrawal, you probably work on a detox unit and learn how to safely detox a patient. You'd also receive training on how to manage patients long term, such as those that are part of an opioid maintenance program. Although mental illness is often portrayed incorrectly in the media, I noticed that there have been some improvements in the overall understanding that this is not a personality issue, but an actual disorder that requires treatment and deserves treatment. The way that I often describe this is just imagine something hijacking your brain to the point where you don't care about risking your money, your health, your relationships with your family and friends. There are signs and symptoms of being intoxicated and being in withdrawal, and sometimes very dangerous consequences. With that being said, some of my most fulfilling moments in psychiatry has been treating those suffering from a substance use disorder and seeing them take their life back. The next one is really interesting because as you're learning about psychiatric conditions, you'll notice that this is asked about every single time and that's sleep. So another fellowship option that you have after general psychiatry residency is sleep medicine. It is really common for sleep to be disrupted when you are suffering from a mood disorder or psychosis. Asking more detailed questions about someone's sleep could help guide your differential diagnosis. So it's very important that you ask every single person. During sleep fellowship, you will learn about all the different sleep disorders and how to manage Manage them. This ranges from sleep apnea and how to encourage proper use of CPAP or even parasomnias like sleepwalking and bedwetting. Forensic psychiatrists work with the court system to perform evaluations and write up forensic reports that will hopefully be helpful during the hearing. As a psychiatrist, you might be called on to testify and provide an expert opinion. You might also comment on whether a person is competent to stand trial or even make recommendations for their mental health services. Some other things that fall under forensic psychiatrist purview include child custody, or even immigration. As I'm talking about all these fellowships, I want you to know that if you're curious about learning a little bit more about them, I put links down below in the description. You can also subspecialize in geriatric psychiatry. A lot of mental illness is chronic, and so you'll be learning how to manage schizophrenia and the long-term effects of something like that, or depression, in a way that takes into account their age and all the other medical comorbidities that just come with age, such as stroke and managing all the possible drug interactions. Given that, electroconvulsive therapy or ECT can be really helpful in this population. There is also a focus on neurocognitive disorders and its effects on memory and behavior. And lastly, there's Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Fellowship. And obviously I have a huge smile on my face because I am a child psychiatrist and I will try to keep this brief because I could probably talk about it all day, but I'll try to spare you. Child psychiatrists focus on children and adolescents, the overall childhood from infancy through development, as well as that transition into adulthood. 
There are a lot of discussions about attachment as well as working alongside the school to best support the kiddo. There is a big focus on understanding the family system in which the child lives. With that understanding, you can provide adequate supports so that the child can heal and grow. Like I was saying in the previous video, during child fellowship, you will learn how to conduct a psychiatric interview that is developmentally appropriate. At the time that I'm filming this, I noticed that I have 50 subscribers already and I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody that's been joining me on this journey. So early on already. I have a lot of fun videos planned so if you stuck around to the end thank you so much. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to join me every Friday for new videos. I just wanted to say thank you so much to every single one of you and leave a comment down below with any questions or anything that you're wondering about and I'll do my best to address them. I think that's it for now. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye! Actually, I'm a quarter, right? That would help.